Praise the Lord. Today we want to talk about what does it mean when the Bible says, take your cross and follow Jesus? Luke 9, 23 says, Jesus says, If anyone, any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take for his cross daily, and follow me. What does it mean to take up the cross? Well, most people say, well, it means uh, you go through some rough times or some tough times, or you're going to be persecuted. And yes, that's true. But that's not only what it means. There's much more to it than that. And let's go into uh, some of those things. To understand what it means to take up the cross, uh, we need to understand uh, a little bit about the tabernacle of Moses. You remember the tabernacle of Moses was a rectangular, a rectangular shape. It was 50 cubits by 100 cubits. Multiplying that, you would have 50 times 100 or 5,000. You remember that Jesus fed the 5,000. Actually, there were 5,000 men. And he put them in rolls of 50 and 100, which indicates an outer court. And the scripture says that they sat on grass. And you remember that there are three levels, the, the grass, the herb bearing seed, and the tree bearing fruit with the seed within itself. All which have meanings in terms of levels of growth. You also remember that in the outer court, there was one post every five cubits. Okay, And so as we go across here to, to make those uh, posts, indicating that uh, there were... So in discussing this then, we begin to learn some things about the outer court. Now, within this outer court, there was a uh, area called uh, the holy place and the holy of holies. We'll find that there was a rectangular shape well within inside this outer court, which was a fenced-in area that was open, but the fence was too high for to see over. And within that uh, space, there was the holy of uh, holy of holies which was a square area, and a rectangular area, which was called the holy place. So we have the holy of holies, and the holy place, and of course the outer court. Now you'll see that God does many things in threes. We have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, for example. Man is three, he is spirit, soul, and body. We have uh, the uh, three areas that the, the Israelites were in, from Egypt through the wilderness into the promised land. Uh, we see that an atom is made of, of three, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, the, uh, a bone, if you cut a section of it, is, has three. There's the bone marrow, uh, the... Uh, uh, periosteum uh, and the atrium. Uh, there, there are three areas to many things. God uses uh, three over and over again. Okay, so uh, when we talk about the this this uh, the, which is in Exodus chapter twenty five, uh, Exodus chapters twenty five actually through forty talks about the tabernacle in detail and the high priests, and the priests, and their garments, uh, we find something uh, else that is peculiar, and that is that there are pieces of furniture within the tabernacle. The first was the, the brazen altar. The second was the brazen laver. The third, within the holy place, was called the lampstand, and there was a bowl at the top of each of the stems of the lampstand. Sometimes it was called a candlestick. Across from it, we have the table of showbread. Then we have the incense altar just before the veil. veil which separated this section which had a covering over the top from, uh, and this was separated between the Holy of Holies beyond the veil 
in which was the Ark of the Covenant, which was a golden box covered with gold inside and out with a crown around the edge of it. It was one and a half cubits by two and a half cubits. And the length and on the sides were one and a half by one and a half cubits. On top of it was the mercy seat. And the mercy seat essentially was the lid for it. And on top of the mercy seat there were an angels with their wings stretching across the uh, over the mercy seat touching in the middle. Now, the thing we should notice about this tabernacle is that it is in the shape of a cross. This placement placed the pieces in the shape of a cross. Now, that should be a hint to us right there. Uh, less, and it also negates that which certain uh, groups say or cults say that he died on a stake and, uh, and rather than a cross. But uh, let's go further in terms of what is it because Jesus is represented at every stage along the way of this. How so? First of all, we find that on the Day of Atonement, the priest was required to slay a lamb without spot nor blemish. In John chapter 1, it says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Now, uh, this lamb that the priest slew, that was well swallowed of blemish, was a type, a pattern, and a shadow of Jesus Christ. At the brazen labor, there was water. The brazen labor, by the way, was made out of the uh, melted down brass mirrors of the women. Perhaps later we'll talk about the reason why for that. But the priest would then wash here at this brazen labor. That gives us the first two pieces of the tabernacle. Uh, and let's talk about the water just a bit. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it says that he might wash and cleanse it by the washing of the water of the word. That the church might be what? Without spot blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. So the washing of the water of the word. In the beginning uh, in, G in John chapter 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. In verse 14 he says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And so this uh, represents Jesus Christ. He is the logos word that gives us the rhema word. The word comes forth from him. Okay. And so this water also represents water baptism. And we'll talk perhaps more about that a little bit later on. And so our first step is to accept the Lamb of God, which you represent Jesus. Our second step is to be water baptized. Okay? And so it tells, when we say take up the cross, this cross is included within the tabernacle of Moses. And there are many other things that we can learn from it. But we'll pause there. And in, in section two, uh, we will go on further and talk more about the tabernacle and the pieces and what they represent.